This is M86. I measured the uh, interference fit on that ball. Half a thou. Probably the bond arising might even take up that. But um, the only way you can fix this is um, drill a hole for a mason and drill and put a quarter ball bearing in there and then make a channel in the bearing that uh, presses over presses over that ball you can never get out and, it can't and press it together or else what happens starts gradually skidding around and where's the step in there or where's the surface five or ten thin you've got all sloppy bearings and you've got a wine mm -hmm. that's the box it came in yeah spicer this proud American company can't even make a uh, interference fit. Should have about one and a half thou interference fit. That mm -hmm. it's uh, one and three quarter inch diameter. That yeah, one and three quarter. It's one thou to the inch. So it should have a good one and a half thou. One and three quarter thou. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed the old gear set just fell off but um that's it that's the shit you got to put up with when you even these chinese and americans can't make stuff properly that should have been rejected did they ground that would have been a ground diameter can't even measure anything some of these tricks so I'm going to spend two hours fixing something up before I can even use it. Afternoon, McNamara. Go. Yeah, so uh, they all made faulty, this stuff, even American shit. What like is that? Chevs, is... Early Chevs, those 1960 odd uh, year Chevs were like that. They had a washer underneath there to set the pinion depth. And they should gradually skid around because there was only about three quarters of a thou interference fit from new. And then they'd wear a ten or fifteen thou step in the in the washer, and the bearings would be loose, and they'd have a, a lousy outer mesh mark, you see, on drive. So they had the Scotch cream, just like that. That's to stop the bearing from rotating, skidding around, skidding around because the this diamond has been ground to too small. It's only half a thou interference fit. You got a fucking there thing in there. The, the ball, ball goes in, and that ball goes in there, yeah, and it doesn't are, rotate. These are quarter. These are ones here. That's how you fix stuff up that's brand new and faulty. Here's the ball. That ball's gonna be. <laughs> There's a lot we could put it in there with this rule, couldn't we? You send this video to them and they'll just say, oh, it's in uh, specifications. They wouldn't know. Here it is there. See, the ball will be in, in that position because it's very close to that shoulder. So the thing is, you've got to make, be very careful that you've got this amply big enough to the OD of that because what will happen is the bearing will distort. Mm-hmm. And uh, it'll cause the bearing to break down. Well, I'm pretty sure there is clearance there. Because that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's clearance. There's going to be clearance there on this thing. Anyway, I'll stop this. Yeah. There you go. If you don't do something about this, you end up having to buy the bike's car off him because he'll be back. Or he want you to pull the diff out and fix it. No money. You'll say, I'm not very happy. It's all because of this American-made rubbish. Not only the Chinese make rubbish, obviously they learnt it off the Americans. I've seen enough of them shortening nine-inch Fords to convince me of that. Imbos talking like they're experts. God. Anyway, the experts cutting axes and arcing, welding together. Got to be kidding. Anyway, so you got to put that on now. 
can't get that little blade. So you got to line the thing up, which ain't all that difficult. Fall, it's, it'll fall in itself. What did you do with that ball? Was it just sitting in there or have you got it it's in there with grease? Nah. Okay. Well, why isn't it falling out? Oh, well, because it uh, wants to be nice. <laughs> it wants to be nice. There you are. That's it. Yeah. I wonder why they, they should, after they make all this shit, they should be measuring it with a micrometer and saying, oh, that's not enough interference fit. We'll start again, make another one. Oh, they've got no inspectors in these workshops anymore. Everything's made uh, cheap and fast. Mm -hmm. Now. So luck of the draw if you get something made properly, eh? <laughs> I think I'll just tell someone next time someone buys me at one of these. I don't fix it, mate. Go, take it to the workshop, Ford workshop. Don't bring it here. Can't be fixed. That'll be right. We'll have to get into making crumble opinions ourselves to get something properly, properly made. See how easy it is to go on. Yeah, it just goes in easy, yeah. And there we are, now there's a ball in there keying it to the shaft of the pinion. Scotch key, it's called. Scotch key, why is it called Scotch key? Because Scotchmen like to do things the cheapest possible way. Cheapest possible way, okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we well now can continue on with the job after two hours of fixing up a brand new item. Mm. Hey. I wonder why you get pissed off here. That was a slip on there and I'll get the slip on one. Um, look, it's that big one. Make this one here. A bloke in America, he's honing one of them out with an engine honer. I like to get this a bit tape hit so it starts going on. Oh, Jesus Christ. Another rocket scientist doesn't know shit from clay. Unless he tasted, that is. <laughs> yeah? No idea. I like to uh, make sure it slips halfway on. Someone fixing a diff from America you're watching, were you? Uh, you really gotta leave comments on these people, Dad, saying how ridiculous the shit they do is. America, the bloke who put the collapsible spacer on there, he's preloaded it all up, and then he put the carrier in. He said, Oh, I gotta take it all apart again now. I'll have to use another co uh, collapsible spacer, because it's already, you can only use these once. <laughs> well, you should leave a comment saying you can stretch them, you know. <laughs> What's the old man? Stretch them on an anvil. Ago. Anyway, turn that off. Okay. <laughs> 